For many years now, Code Masters F1 games on PC have been pleased for mods, and uh, a lot of people came by and then went on to mod different games, but all, pretty much all of the Code Masters F1 games on PC have been modded in one way or another. Even back in 2010, with the, uh, well, standard helmet mods, or, well, car texture mods, to, uh, in the later games, uh, uh, enhancing the AI of the games, or improving the force feedback of the games, or even getting to the point where big overhaul mods were made for the games. And uh, when you look, for example, at Rage Department, you can see that there are a lot of mods for this game. And not even for F1 games, but for Dirt also. So, yeah, Codemasters games are quite popular to mod. However, the recent Codemasters F1 games have been quite harder to mod. And everything started back with F1 2015, which uh, changed the file structure since uh, the game used an upgraded Ego engine, from what I know. And some file structures were changed, some files were hidden, some files were still available, but modders had to dig deep to find the files. So eventually we still got some modding in the games, though in the, well, so-called current generation of the games, which would be from F1 2015 to, well, I suppose F1 2020. Uh, so... Yeah, the current uh, F1 games don't really have that much modding uh, when compared to the previous generation of the games. Most of the modding possible is you can modify helmets, you can modify textures of other cars, and generally you can also change a few other things uh, in the user interface. Maybe adjust it a little bit to your liking. However, no serious mods were available because a lot of the more interesting files were kind of in, a, in an unknown place because we couldn't really find them and they weren't really available to be modified. But what if I told you that, that there soon might be a way to modify some of the hidden files of the more recent Code Masters of One games, including the language file, which was not available in the 2019 edition of the game because, uh, well, I kinda leaked some stuff a bit early. I fully admit that. But uh, nevertheless, what if I told you that there is still a way which may be possible in the future, which would allow us to edit much more than we could Bef well, we than we can right now. And in this video, I will demonstrate you how to at least access the hidden files and uh, see what's the content of them. Because at this moment, it's not really possible to mod them as of yet. But eventually, I will talk about everything in this video. Hello everyone and welcome, my name is Montaza, and today I will be demonstrating you how can you access some of the hidden files in the code map in the well, recent code masters f1 games now i'm titling this video advanced f1 game modding because uh, well generally speaking in the well current gen uh, the most known uh, method of editing files is just using the ego erp archiver but uh, Knowing that uh, there's no language file in, for example, F1 2019, which we, can, we could modify to expand the modding capabilities a bit, we actually discovered that uh, there's also a way to get the language file and to also access some of the other things which are hidden in, well, in the game file. So, yeah, in this tutorial, I will try to demonstrate and explain how to access it and how to look at it. As I probably already mentioned, there is no way to modify the files yet. Currently, the modding is not possible. But, 
I hope that the tool which we'll be using will be updated in the future, which will allow us to improve the game a little bit more. And not to mention, it is compatible with pretty much all recent Codemasters of One games. It also it is also compatible with Dirt games, and uh, I don't know. It should even be compatible with F1 2020. But there's no guarantees here. Unless Codemasters decide to change something, then yeah, we're kind of a then we will be stuck. However, hopefully they won't change anything, and yeah, I will just demonstrate you how to access everything. Now, before we start, I also want to mention, I am not creator of any of these tools. I will leave the links in the description for to the respective applications I will probably be using here. And generally speaking, I just, I am just a shower. I just, I will just demonstrate how to access the files. However, there is no modifying them, at least for now. But if you're a skilled modder, then go help with developing the tool. Maybe you can improve the tool that we could save the files. So that would be impressive stuff. But I will demonstrate what will be possible to edit. And uh, as a demonstration, I will demonstrate F1 2018 because it is the game I, well, have in my external hard drive as a backup if I ever decide to play. I do not own F1 2019, so I am working only on rumors there, but uh, I have seen some proof of those rumors, so take it with a pinch of salt, but generally speaking, it should work fine for 2019 completely, and especially I hope that it will work properly for the upcoming F1 2020 game, which is at the, at the time of recording in, well, it's incoming in a month's time. So, yeah, that's that. So, without further ado, let's get on with the tutorial. And, yeah, hopefully it will be interesting, informative, and hopefully you'll learn something here. Now, the tool which I will be using is called the Nefs Edit. Uh, as it is the description, Nefs Edit allows opening and modifying Nefs uh, well, NEFS, I don't know how to even pronounce it, but let's just say NEFS, archive files. These archive files are used by Ego Engine games such as Dirt 4 and Dirt Rally 2. Ironically, some of the stuff is actually used in the Codemasters F1 games also. So, it actually works with the game and it also allowed me and a few others in the modding community to look into it and see what might be possible in the future if, well, the tool will be updated, of course. Now, uh, for uh, this uh, video, I will be using the version 0.6.0. It's the pre-release version, uh, which uh, was released on May 13th, so pretty much about a month ago. And uh, why I'm using this is because this line. It is support for Nefts version 1.6. Ironically, the file which we'll be opening is exactly the version 1.6, so even though it says support, but uh, technically speaking, it only allows us to, for now, open the files. It allows replacing, but it does not allow saving as of yet, unfortunately. But, as I said, if you are a modder, well, if you are a programmer, I suppose, and or you just know some stuff about the uh, the files we'll, which we'll be using, then sure, just jump in it and uh, yeah, maybe help with the modding. So yeah, basically, if you go to the link, I will leave in the description below, and if you like open the releases section, uh, download this zip, the Nefs edit to 0.6.0 zip. It's like, well, as you can see, 700 kilobytes, so not a big program. It's very easy to you know, just download and extract it somewhere, just to make sure to basically have it in, in a known place and also have the game prepared to be launched, basically. Oh, after you extract it somewhere, you are greeted by a lot of files here and the one you need to open is the nefsedit.exe file. Double-click it and, well, the application window opens. 
juice. As you can see right now, pretty simple, but uh, also pretty informative. So what we will be using is the file called game.dat. This is the file we'll, which will be which we will be opening. Pardon my uh, struggle to talk. As you probably already know, I'm not a native native Englishman, but I'm trying my best. Anyway, before I derail this topic a bit more, so yeah, we will be opening the game.dat file, which usually resists in the main game folder. So I have connected my external hard drive now, and we will be opening. I will show you correct steps how to open it, at least using the version 0.6 of this application, the net setting. So click, click file and then open. You're greeted by this window, which uh, basically gives you some suggestions like nefs, recent, and then the main thing, game bin from Dirt Rally 1, game dat from Dirt Rally 2, game dat from Dirt 4, or game dat or bin custom. So yeah, basically whatever the application detects. So you select the custom option, then you select the game executable. So for this, I will go to here, uh, I will go to here, I think, yeah, uh, F1 2018. As I said, I will be demonstrating this with F1 2018. Uh, and yeah, then I'll just select uh, one of the EXEs. So probably this, so the DX11 one. Also, don't mind the other EXEs. These are from back when the accidental debug build, well, well, debug build EXEs were released, I still keep them. Don't ask, I'm not sharing them. Unless you have a very good reason why I should share them to you. But even then, I probably won't. So don't even dare asking. I'm in enough trouble with code matters as it is. So I'm not really in trouble, but yeah, I don't want to get into more trouble. Anyway, select the executable. It can be DX12 if you want to, but just for the sake of it, let's just go with the DX11 one. So yeah, then you select the game that directory. And it's usually just more of the same, just select the, the main folder of the game. So yeah, F1 2018, click OK. And then you should you have to click this button search. So yeah, it there it finds the game.dat file. So select it and then click open. Then let the software do the job. Which is which it is doing right now. As you can see in the console below here, you can see that uh, it says detected NEFS version 1.6, well with its own well details and stuff. So yeah, it's currently reading the header. It takes some time because I connected the, my hard drive to 2.0 port because 3.0 is a bit glitchy. Old external hard drive, don't blame. So yeah, it can turn some warnings because that's to be expected. It's a tool in progress, hopefully. Well, it's still being developed. And yeah, generally you're greeted by something like this, as you can see in the main window right now. So now that you have opened the archive, you can actually look into things which are, well, in this archive. As you can see, in this exemplary archive of Game Dad, we have six main folders, Asset Groups, Game, Ghost Labs, MFD, System, and Steam Workshop. Now, for Steam Workshop, literally not that interesting, it's just placeholder images for workshop support. You know, you can, if you play the game on PC, you can actually go to the Steam Workshop of, of, the, of the F1 2018 game and subscribe to, to some setups if you want to. Though, the thing is a bit redundant because uh, the setups are available in the time trial. So, yeah, there is also that. But yeah, generally speaking, you can just open this and yeah you should see stuff if for some reason you think you are missing stuff you can go from tree view to the debug view and it will closely describe every single file available in this well in this archive as you can see there are a lot of files here i'm just quickly skimming through 
and yes, yeah, so various files like performance data for various cars and stuff, which we probably will, will be able to modify also. So yeah, I'm just skimming through and yeah, just many different things you can find here, but no LNG file here, because if you remember with F1 2018, I think with some help from Arava, uh, we got the Lang files opened up once again. Though after they were cleaned quite a bit, if I recall correctly. At least if I recall correctly. But yeah, generally speaking, if uh, if tree view doesn't work and you think there should be more, you can switch to debug view. Archive debug and item debug just shows more information for development purposes, basically. You don't really use them too much. So, uh, yeah, you just open a thing and then you can just look into what it consists. And just to quickly glimpse through, I will demonstrate a few files, uh, their contents in a few minutes, but just glimming, well, just looking through what does the uh, game data for 2018 consist, and uh, there are some interesting files like config.xml, for example, there's also default mouse action map, so apparently the game can support mouse, but for some reason doesn't? I don't know. So yeah, we have uh, uh, leaderboard, matchmaking, uh, state machine, like uh, worker maps so for rendering, well, basically for game performance, uh, MFD, not really much, just one file, Ghost Labs, so 19, so yeah, uh, Ghost Labs are uh, put in in 1980 and 2017 groups. 1980 is the classic cars, 2017 is what's actually called the, well, the current cars even though it's a 2018 game, but you can already tell quite a few things are just carried through from previous games. So yeah, if you open that, you can just see more stuff like ghosts. You can open up ghosts if you want to, if you can somehow, for classic cars or for current cars. And it works in pretty much any track, in any track you want. So yeah, game. Uh, just some flow files, nothing really interesting. Just maybe to understand what the game, what what is the game logic in every moment. And then the asset groups, which consist of more interesting stuff like ego package. We have the application.erp, which is already interesting. Um, we have the, in, in here we have AI and uh, well, as you can already see on the left, well, let me just increase it a bit more. We have AI for every single car in the game. And in every folder, there's also low, medium, very high, very low. If you have played uh, any of the previous uh, Code Matters of One games on PC, so 2014 or earlier, you might be familiar with the names for uh, those folders. Low, medium, very high, very low. And in those folders, like for example in low, there's vehicle performance. And that's, for example, for Braun of 2009. So yeah, low, medium, very high, very low. But that's not only that. Let, let's take, for example, a refresh car, like... I don't know, McLaren, so I can move like that if I want to, so very high. And then we also have, for, well, for the modern cars, we have grip performance, throttle performance, and then vehicle performance. So even more files you can actually edit. As a group, you don't really have to care about them too much, they're just literally descriptive files. So, uh, from what I know, they don't really change much, so... There's that. But yeah, that's AI. FFB, we have force feedback package. And I will show it in a moment because I am quite interested in, in that and I'm looking forward to, if it's possible to modify it, and I'm looking forward to force feedback improvements. Ground cover, so probably some textures or maybe how the ground uh, reacts. Photo mode. 
so probably additional settings. Post process, well, default and well, default is actually does not have anything. And well, track default, which has things. Uh, test car, which is for literally for testing the game if it if well, if it displays everything correctly, like correct colors and stuff. Uh, in the environment package for well any track, we have virtual performances. Well, from 2015 apparently, which for well virtual performance data for all the cars in the game. Like if we have even the FOM car mentions, if you can already tell, we have FOM car 95. Uh, that's the 1995, I think, Ferrari, um, the last V12 engine, but as you can see, there's FOM car 95, and then we have Ferrari 95, so that might be very interesting, and yeah, that's for Abu Dhabi, and that's literally for every track in the game, so Hockenheim, Mexico, Montreal, Shanghai, Austria, you know, just, you name it, we got it. And then in the game package we have the naughty words. Basically, thing well words you can't really use when more or less creating your first name and last name. You can probably extend it a little bit more or maybe remove those words to you know use the words because of course. <laughs> but yeah, that's just a glimpse of what the game actually has. Of course. As a lot of the content here is ERP, you will still need Ego ERP Archiver to open the files. But just as an example, I will extract a virtual performance for uh, what's the ra upcoming race? It's in Montreal. So yeah, let's just extract virtual performance for the 12th 20 of 2015, apparently, uh, because the folder is 2015. Uh, something I don't know let's see um let's just say I want to extract uh, the performance data from from I don't even know what I would like to yeah as you can see in 2018 game there's a virtual performance data for f2 car you can already tell 2019 was way in development here but yeah Let's just say, as it's my favorite team, and I will admit, though I try to still support them, not too blindly, but I try to respect every team. Let's just say Ferrari. So, if everything's right, you should be able to right-click the file and then select Extract 2. Now, yeah, when you select Extract 2, a new window opens to, well, to save as, and you can just select where to save. Uh, don't mind a lot of bullshit here. So yeah, let's say F1 2018 stuff as you can already tell I have a lot of stuff here extracted, which I will demonstrate what's probably consistent and yeah File name. So let's keep it as it was and just save It ex should extract and Extracting item should be complete if everything goes right. There should it sh they should not throw any errors. Though, even though uh, you can see there's an option to replace, we do not have the ability to, re well, actually replace, because we also need to use the save as function. But that function is currently locked, because the saving does not support the NEFS version 1.6 because if I recall correctly Dirt Games might use the NEFS version 2.0 or maybe Grid Games, I don't even know right now the Grid 2019 at least so yeah, uh, we can't really save it does not allow us so we're stuck with not replacing things at least for now but as I already mentioned in the video if you are a programmer and uh, you would be interested in maybe helping the development, go for it. Contact the developer. Maybe he, well, maybe you can help him finish up this app and open up the editing quite a bit. But yeah, that's just general use of the application. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff here. 
Um, and well, debug view basically shows everything in one big giant, well, pile. But yeah, just generally some, well, demonstration how it works and how can you extract files. Unfortunately, as I said, you can't replace them yet. But yeah, it's a good start, as I have already mentioned on my Twitter. And uh, as I as I will post, uh, well, I, I will post a link on Twitter to this video, and I will mention the people I mentioned before. I hope this is this was currently explain well explan self explanatory, and uh, yeah. Just basically how we got access to even more stuff of the game. And I think there is a lot of potential here. We could modify quite a lot here. And uh, yeah, that's just extends what we can modify. But yeah, just that's a lot of modifying which can be unlocked. And that's not only like language files. Um, and I can say that there is a language file. If you open, for example, F1 2019's, well, game that file. Now, I will let you in on a quick secret, and I hope I won't get in trouble, because I can say I am participating in the closed beta of F1 2020. And also, and also thanks Codemasters for that. But... What I can say is that I use this tool to check out F1 2020 closed beta. And it worked. For now, it worked. Though not fully. Some things were not really working. And I'm not sure if that was because it was the beta. Or maybe it was because it uses somewhat maybe different protection. We don't know yet. I only know that uh, ERP got a few updates, so the ERP archiver may not support 2020 game early. You might need to wait for a bigger update for that. But uh, yeah, that's just what it works with Neff's edit. And uh, yeah, just I will leave the link in the description below for this file. If you want, you can check out maybe older games. Maybe you want to check out F1 2019 game yourself, and maybe you can find even more interesting stuff in like 2019, maybe even some hidden stuff, who knows. But I'm just saying what to do, and uh, yeah, just explaining how to do things. So, now I will demonstrate some of the files I have extracted previously from the F1 2018 game, and I will show you a few things which I have found in those files and what they basically consist of and why I am excited for maybe being able to mod, mod these files someday. So, of course, as most of these are ERP files, I will be using the, the well, classic Ego ERP Archiver uh, tool, which, well, as always, is great to you. Uh, as a reminder, for settings, you have to set your game directory to the correct one. Now I have this on the wrong directory, which is kind of an embarrassing situation, but then again, I... I really wasn't prepared when I'm making this video, so... We have what we have, and I'm not cutting this out. <laughs> right, anyway, so yeah, I set this up correctly now, so it shows to F1 2018. And now let's just try and open some of the stuff, like for example this application.erp file. Uh, we, I can't really drag and drop. You can already tell I have modded a lot of things here. <laughs> I'm joking, of course I have not really modded. Um, 2018 I haven't really been modding too much, but uh, yeah, basically I was maybe trying to mod well, basically try to skin some R-Factor 2 card, well, the 2019 mod for R-Factor 2, which is also quite fun to drive around, even with a simple gamepad, though, with no assists, it's challenging and fun, even with the, around the new Zonward, though, because in closed beta I didn't really have 
the design world or we don't really have any tracks to test it out then yeah we, we did not get the new tracks to test out they're still kept hidden I, I think I can say I can say that that's not like I hopefully I won't get in trouble for that if I do I'm sorry didn't mean to I don't think that changes anything but yeah let's just open up stuff and uh, yeah Let's just open up application ERP. So yeah, you can see there are some textures like uh, lens flare. So yeah, some effects for that. Uh, base noise map, yeah, not supported. It's like there are some stuff here, package files of well, types apparently. So like you can probably look over that in well yourself to maybe get a bit better explanation. Like render model here. Uh, animation model, animation physics model, yeah, you know, just, I'm not even explaining things here because you'll have to look into everything yourself here, maybe you can find something interesting, but what I'm, well, interested here, for example, in application.erp, not to mention that there's a lot more which we can't really see because, like, there are some, like, scenes and even configs. Though I don't know if they're really useful. Like you can see, there's a lot of like config files here, and difficult to say which of them are actually useful. But yeah, there's there are actually two XML files here, and that's like data physics material. If you are familiar with any well physics modding for uh, well. Uh, previous F1 games like uh, pre F1 2015, you might see a few familiar names, and uh, basically, what this is here is uh, what well, basically, physics materials it's the description for materials used in the game. Like, for example, what friction do they give, what color they are, and uh, what mechanics do they use? Uh, like the uh, tire table, so how does tires react? Like what grip they give? Like, for example, the AstroTurf actually gives a grip of 0 0.985. And in, well, pro grip, so probably pro season mode, I don't, really, I don't know, that's literally, I guess, pro grip is. 0.85 also bump wavelength that for force feedback so yeah hardness slow down minimum speed for slow down like force feedback surface like you can change some mechanics here like uh, astroturf could give uh, your force feedback uh, surface of i don't know concrete for for example and yeah just can change some audio, well, you can change some audio if you want to. And yeah, there's a lot of things here, like car bottom here, uh, car wheel, uh, car front wing, so... Um, yeah, just a lot of things here, and uh, let me just quickly go to the main thing, so yeah, <laughs> unrecoverable uh, yeah tire wall so how does tire wall work the mechanics and what sound should they should it give like now we have concrete and tarmac uh the grass dirt how does dirt uh, uh well react to this um and yeah just smooth dry tarmac which give literally a grip of one which is great. And uh, yeah, contradiction, rumble strip. Uh, and yeah, you can probably play with grips here and when we should be able to, and should we be able to modify this, I think we could just adjust some of the, uh, well, materials to maybe give less grip, maybe increase the friction, maybe decrease the friction. Like, for example, with heavy dry gravel, the friction is 2, while with smooth dry tarmac, the friction is 0 0.4. And, uh, yeah, just uh, very 
interesting to see that. And yeah, you also have physics properties, which describes things here even more. Like, uh, I don't, of course, I don't even know what's here, but you can see that some materials are like fine, rubber, like uh, polystyrene. Like, if something is made uh, from polystyrene, that material should be used to poly. So yeah, and with even with some comments, a bale uh, material required is following shape properties are required. So yeah, hay bales, well, not probably, probably not in F1 games. Vegetation large, vegetation medium, vegetation small, tree, stone, wood. And then we have some, well, commented out, probably used from different Codemaster games. Could be it, to be told. And yeah, we have like more stuff here, which of course I can't really explain much. You will have to basically basically look into it yourself to understand some more. Now, the next file I will be opening is the force feedback one. So force feedback consists of literally one file, FFB data.ffb, very creative, 10 out of 10. Uh, XML file, fortunately, and it is very simple to understand. Like, you have your FFB devices set up, and you can even change the scales if you want. You even have, like, your force feedback channel. How should they work if you want to? Like, we have X input, X1 pad, like, we have X1 pad. But it, which is pretty much more of the same. And then we have like um, center spring, which, uh, well, does not support. Well, basically, from FFB plugin, this is where the modification of what force feedback does uh, starts. Basically, collision. So, yeah, for example, here for FFB channel. So, yeah, for. Uh, X input pad, so yeah, three, you could probably change that uh, for different, uh, uh, well, as you can probably, well, already see here, like for different devices, you can use a bit different scale if you want to. And uh, yeah, even for different, uh, well, you can even define the waves, well, basically what uh, does uh, any, well, for feedback, thing does and you can even define the surfaces for 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 well basically you can define force feedback for surfaces for example mgg plus this is where the previous uh, uh, data file comes in so you can understand what surface this is like for example we have the uh which one i am actually very interested in now i don't really remember. I think that was yeah, this one SDT plus, which actually says true because I think I have actually modified this one. I tried to I tried saving, but yeah, I discovered that it's not really possible. But yeah, just this is I think by default false. So I think if it would be set to true, then you. While driving on tarmac, you should actually have some force feedback in your car. Because now if you drive on a gamepad and, for example, you do some turns at certain angles, you will still not get any force feedback. Especially if you're driving and you're doing a turn and you're not reaching, like, uh, anything. And, well, you're not sliding, you're not braking, you're not locking up, you're not uh, spinning tires. Basically, you're just driving proper. Then you'll not get any force feedback in some turns. Because this effect of the SDT+, Plus, which is smooth, dry tarmac, which is what's mainly used uh, for the tarmac in the game, that does not support the pad. Which is unfortunate, really. Uh, I think it should really be supported, but I understand maybe some people wouldn't like that. But yeah, just generally, force feedback modification should be possible. But of course, we need to have the tool. All right, now let's look into photo mode ERP. So yeah, we have some textures, which is which is basically what the overlays 
are being used for, you know, when you're applying some sort of effect. And I don't think it actually consists of anything else. Yeah, default photo mode config, so yeah, nothing really much there, which is kind of an interesting thing, I suppose, but, well, maybe you can find something here. All right, so let's just see, I mean, of course, I don't remember what actually card is this is and from where, but let's just open up the vehicle performance, and uh, there are two, well, there are actually five files here, but just uh, only two are being displayed in the section. So, acceleration, braking, cornering, bruising, and throttle. And, well, you can see already the respectable recourse types. So, uh, of course, XML we can't really see, but I think we can technically export them. But, yeah, let's just say, so, yeah. Uh, throttle, THPD. So, yeah. You just have like this, which is not really that easy to understand. You'll probably need to test a lot to understand what the, uh, uh, well, what everything reflects anything. And yeah, just some, well, all right. So that's variation very high of Ferrari of some sort. I don't know. Of course, that's just, I will... Quickly, well, not really quickly, but just kind of slowly skim through so that you could look into this. Maybe you will have some understanding of uh, how things work here. So, yeah, just maybe we, sh we will be able to modify AI, which would be a very interesting improvement. To my opinion, of course. And uh, yeah, just generally speaking, there are a lot of things you can find here. And I will not show everything, of course, but just see what's in the virtual performance data of Ferrari we just extracted here. We have only one resource, which is BP times type of resource. And well, virtual, virtual performance data of Ferrari. Of Montreal truck. All right, all right. So, if it would be able to modify it, then maybe we could. Well, we maybe we we could even fix the fast forwarding times, though probably unlikely. But eh, you may never know, actually. So, yeah. Just if you extract something and uh, you discover something, then. Of course, share with people. I think a lot of people would be interested in this. Finally, I want to demonstrate that, uh, well, that the XML files can consist of interesting stuff. Now, I won't be showing everything here because I think the video is already getting a bit long now. But uh, yeah, there are quite a few things here you, you can check out. Like, for example, <laughs> here, the comment. John L. John 1, John L. I don't know. This is really slow in Windows 7, 64 bit, disabling for the moment. So. Yeah. John, fix this. Please. Also, John, uh, do something for Windows 7, wouldn't you? <laughs> right, jokes aside. Um, yeah, uh, it's nice to see that even those in, well, in these XML files, you can find some interesting comments here and there and even see various things like, for example, like games version number. You can set your game version number to be something here, like major 1, minor 16. Also, yeah, just various things you can just see here and, uh, yeah, game mode, none. By default, session ID, race, rule set, race, laps 25, by default, apparently. So, there is also driver data, which is kind of an interesting thing. But, uh, yeah, number of drivers, 22, for some reason. Probably because it's multiplayer. So, for multiplayer, yeah, I just set it to 22, okay. 
Player gr grid slot is zero. Eh, okay. Player driver, Lewis Hamilton. Um, okay, but yeah. Config set of 2017 driver data. So, drivers from 0 to 19. So, yeah, 20 drivers. So, full uh, loadout of, uh, well, drivers here. And then we have a config set for 1980, basically for classics. And yeah, Benetton, Benetton 95. Hold on, was this game... Did this game already had some predictions for 2020? Just how much stuff had 2018 had? Anyway, um, yeah, maybe just a typo, I don't know. McLaren 88, Williams 96, William 92, McLaren 98, Ferrari 04, Renault 06, Ferrari 07, McLaren 08, Braun 09, Red Bull 13. What? Red Bull 13. Okay, jokes aside, uh, also a bit of a sidetrack, but that's not the first time I'm seeing this. Even in the language files, the... If you check anything Red Bull related, you can still see that there is one line for the 2013 Red Bull RB9. Yeah, that's RB9. So, there is one line for that, and I'm not sure. Maybe, especially with 2020 game doing other stuff with ERS, Maybe it's a possibility that uh, those cars could get brought back. Maybe the 2011-2013 cars, maybe some of those could be classics. I don't know. Just, you know, just some guesses here. But yeah, just, you know, just there's also various stuff like Track IR for Toby can, well, enable disable stuff, I suppose, here. Um... Anything else I could really check? Maybe some funny... Uh, yeah, so how does the game work uh, for consoles? Like here, PS4, like, uses a bit different, like, memory allocation. Xbox One uses a bit different. Uh, Windows uh, uses not a lot even at all. Um, uh, yeah, just various stuff here. And I'm not sure if that's actually editable if all of this stuff is editable then oh boy we can probably change a lot of things here and uh, yeah gfx so yeah graphic graphics effects so yeah actors we could probably disable animations and stuff or maybe even rendering so yeah debug resolution also i remember reading through this and i was quite intri intrigued because yeah for uh, context at the uh, uh, GFX for PS4, if you're using base, the, well, resolution is 1920 by 1980, which is, well, standard 1080p. But if you're using Pro, you the resolution here is 3200 on 1800. That's not even 4K. 4K is actually here. As you can probably tell by me marking this. So, yeah. Interesting. Intriguing. So, probably it renders at a bit lower resolution. Intentionally. Though, very much... Uh, well, a lot of things here are just... Uh, well, guesses at this point. Because a lot of things... Of, well, basically all of the things here we cannot really test it out. Of course, because, you know, we can't, we can't really change things here. But, uh, yeah, there's like also time of day config set, so... Fourth random dynamic scenario, false. Okay. Override scenario. So, yeah, the standard of uh, override scenario, override time of day, override time itself. Huh? That would be interesting. So, display screen info. Uh... Not sure about that. Uh, config set, so yeah, weather. So weather system enabled, true. We could disable weather. That would be something. 
but uh, debug enabled uh, probably just seeing somewhere how does the weather system react to things and well how does it work i suppose maybe um debug osd uh racing lines use old version uh, ui so yeah display watermark so probably you know the top uh, work in progress you can you already see in 2020 video uh, show loading tips intriguing uh so yeah network so yeah prediction physics transport matching also yeah so yeah we can probably see just how does the network work in in the game basically so yeah that's also land so yeah that's understandable but yeah prediction so yeah teleportation distance distance and time maybe you can even adjust that though of course after you edit any of these and if it's possible to save modified files in the future do not play multiplayer you might even get kicked and or banned immediately so please do not test this online this is purely for offline purposes and yeah you can see here like back, getting back to the things like here matching we have a uh, well, skill rating factor so yeah how does the skill rating works safety rating how does it influence things progress factor region factor so yeah a lot of the things here debug camera that force feedback you can probably disable it completely if you want to here achievements uh so yeah game so yeah new race thoughts i'm not sure what's that i i was never sure uh disable ai on race start so yeah you can probably disable ai completely yeah i don't know enable manual up gears enable manual down gears yeah. skip start lights skip intro cameras yeah so a lot of things here drs also allow any time any lap probably very interesting settings to use probably i will say it if it's if any time is set to true then there might be same as 2012 rules as you can probably use drs anywhere which is interesting though i think it needs both uh, true on both then if only second one is set to true so allow any lap that basically uses the qualifying rule well current practice and qualifying rules you know in the race of course uh and yeah just generally speaking a lot of very intriguing things here and uh yeah you should check it out yourself i will not get into too much details here because that's just that will take even more time of the video but uh yeah generally speaking there's a lot to be reading here and maybe in the future testing it also so yeah pretty intriguing and there's also one more file which i want to show well actually there is, will be one one more but yeah you know basically i will show uh, one more thing but yeah i want to show module.xml which uh, basically shows what mod modules are loaded to the game when and where basically so yeah module definitions order in this list define startup order so yeah shutdown order is in reverse all module wants to be referenced in exactly one thing yeah so basically how rendering works and stuff um yeah so initializing modules and uh, yeah smoke test module for example uh, context mask always it, so yeah, it loads always but you will need to be either in debug debug opt or profile settings so if you have encountered the uh, debug stuff from well accidental previous codemasters releases you may be able to mess around with the debug console as you can see here so yeah uh, ignore time multiplier true config only on debug debug opt and profile 
fun things. So my guess is that if we can just, well, delete this part and then save, and of course save import things, we might be able to use the debug, the debug console in the game anytime. Now, this is literally just a, well, bad, basically kind of bad calculation, I suppose, but uh, yeah, just my guess is that uh, if debug console would be available at any time, we could see some incredible modding, lifetime in game, though, of course, it's only for offline. And yeah, you we have here a lot of like debug opt uh, stuff here, which you can see with the debug exes and stuff. So yeah, I will just quickly skim through them, like here, like full debug stuff, things that use actors, like timing board, pit wall people, pit stop module, and yeah, just uh, what it uses, where, and. Uh, how it uses things, I suppose, here. Also, when the rendering goes, yeah, I'm not even going that far because that's so advanced. I don't know if you even know. I do not even understand some of this thing, some of these things. So, I'm not getting into details here, but yeah, just a lot of stuff here is manageable to modify, which is of interesting and yeah i'm looking forward to well i'm looking forward to see the tool upgrade and then modding to probably explode from the new capabilities because that's a lot of new capabilities to be used so yeah hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully it was somewhat informative and interesting for you to watch now I will show you one more file, but uh, this will require the language editor, though I will not be showing it very much. Now, I must say, for everything, just go do it everything yourselves and go explore and, well, share your findings. You, you can even tag me if you want to on Twitter, at Mantazo. Uh, to share some, well, findings with me, if you really want to. And, uh, yeah, who knows, that maybe we can expand the modding by quite a big margin for current Gen F1 games. Hopefully the next Gen of F1 games won't change too much, so that we can still modify them. And you can probably already tell I'm recording late in the evening. Uh, well, not really late, it's like, uh, almost half past ten, so... 10 p.m. So, yeah, uh, just generally speaking, hopefully you enjoyed the video, hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial, and hopefully it was informative enough. And, uh, yeah, just for the sake of it, there is, well, as I have probably already teased, there is, there was this 2020 folder, which I have four finals, which, well, were taken oh, for, from the well current build of closed beta we have, and yeah, I know you can probably see that 2021 mention. It doesn't make any sense, don't worry. I cannot say anything about it yet, maybe the tool needs upgrading. I can look into it, but it doesn't really say anything at all. I would need to compare it to, I don't know, 2019 game, 20, 2020 game actually. That would be a comparison. But what I want to show, even for a very quick moment, is just this language file, which I extracted for 2020 game. Now, for the sake of not getting myself into trouble, I will reduce the window to very small. Just to not show anything I that I could get into trouble. If I show anything unrelated, then yeah, I will not get in trouble. So, kinda win-win. But, thanks for watching this video, thanks for watching this tutorial, hopefully this was informative, and uh, 
You are free to remake this tutorial if you really want to. Uh, and if you're free to basically... How should I even say it? You are free to remake the tutorial and uh, maybe explain it in a bit simpler terms if you can manage that. Or, well, if you can manage, well, to do things or maybe if the tool gets updated with other ways. So, there's also that and, uh, yeah, uh, just, <sighs> I always struggle with endings. <laughs> but, yeah, generally just... You're free to modify if you really want to. Well, you're free to uh, remake this tutorial if you really want to. Just credit where it's due, all right? Just don't forget to credit the developer for making all this. And you, well, you don't really have to credit me for making the original one. But, well, some appreciation, some appreciation would be necessary. And Codemasters, if you're watching this, I hope I'm not in trouble. If I am, you can contact me on email, I will take this video down, we can we can discuss this in friendly terms, okay? I'm already in the testing of the beta and so far the game is quite good, I would say. And it, it is quite good and uh, I'm I have almost bought it, but currently just saving some money. Basically. Right, anyway, I've derailed, derailed this quite a bit and uh, yeah, just Thanks for watching, thanks for everything, and uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Now I also need to edit this. Well, that will take some time. Probably not too long. Anyway, take care, have a great rest of your evening, or have a great rest of your day. Whatever, whatever the time you're watching, maybe uh, two years in the future, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just... Enjoy your time and hopefully the world is in the better shape in the future and uh, yeah, hopefully the modding community will be even bigger in the future. So, I forgot I need to... Ugh. That's embarrassing, but yeah, generally speaking, just yeah, go here, uh, where is my... yeah, team stuff. 2020, languaging, open. And yeah, that's, that's just uh, what I wanted to show. Uh, I also just uh, quickly uh, modified to show by, well, basically arranged by name just to not show any, well, unnecessary stuff though. You can already see that there's even 2014 mentions and well, 2020, of course, for LNG 2017. Great job there. <laughs> anyway, take care and yeah, I'll see you next time. How to look at it. As I probably already mentioned, I, well, applications I will probably be using here. And uh, generally, and generally speaking, I would demonstrate you things if I could actually connect my hard drive because the only remaining USB port which I don't consistently use is currently used for well for the wristband to charge so yeah great stuff there for me well prepared god damn it <sighs> we have FOM car 95 and uh, FOM car 95 would actually represent the Ferrari 95. Uh, three Ferrari, uh, what was the model? 312T2? I don't know, the last V10 engine. V V12, we, we, the last V12. Oh, that's a blooper, <laughs> I can't even speak.